I talk about 3D printing a lot and how awesome it is, and part of why it's awesome is because you can 3D print things from the Star Wars universe. And I mean, stuff like this, a TIE Interceptor. This was printed on the CR6 SE in a flat pack sort of IKEA configuration. It's amazing. It's small, and it should be a little bit bigger. So let's talk about that right here on 3D Printing Nerd. <laughs> Big thanks to Thangs for sponsoring this episode. Head to Thangs.com and stick around to find out more. There you are. Welcome back. Uh, this... I'm yelling. You are. Sorry. This is quite possibly... I'm looking at it because it's down there. And it's this is one of the coolest stupefying things I've ever printed. So it starts here. This is a TIE Interceptor. I saw this on Reddit by Reddit user Fixum Dude. No, no, I'm not joking. Fixum Dude. F I X U M D U D E. Fixum Dude. Fixum Dude. Reddit user Fixum Dude made this because uh, I believe someone wanted it. And so he made this in a flat pack IKEA sort of configuration where all of these pieces come out and these pieces then they don't form Voltron, they form the TIE Interceptor. It's, it's really, really cool. This was printed on the CR6. It's a little bit stringy. This is Creality's filament, and I sliced it in the Creality slicer. So, you know, ecosystem. But at the same time, it's not perfect. But still, it should go together. Let's do that right now. I have to get my utensils of death. Wait, wait. I don't think I need this. I think I can just... Yep, I need them. <laughs> And like, like magic, like pulling a rabbit from a 3D printed hat, we have ourselves a TIE Interceptor. And it looks suspiciously familiar to the one that I put together before. That's good. I know, I used it as reference. <laughs> the TIE Interceptor isn't the only thing that Fixum Dude, love that name, put out. There's also another model. You know it as the Millennium Falcon. Sean calls it Space Benchy. Yes. Uh, it's what Ray pilots in The Force Awakens. I got a bad feeling about this. It's, it's pretty cool. It does follow some interesting conventions. It is IKEA style flat pack as well. This was printed on the Prusa Mini using that unreleased protopasta filament that I showcased on the stream. It's a beautiful color. It's a beautiful color. You're gonna make me take this apart and put it together, aren't you? If you want. I don't want to. Okay. Because we see it together. We understand how this process works. This is really exciting. This is fun. And honestly, Space Benchy right here and two TIE Interceptors. I think, I think these are fantastic. I love the way that these go together and I love the way that these were designed because it makes sense. It makes sense. There are pieces that you have to pop out like an old model kit and then you put them together and you have yourself a three-dimensional shape that resembles something, well, from your childhood. What if we went bigger? What if, what if we went slightly bigger? What if we just tried to, tried to make these just, just a little bit bigger? Just a little bit. I can tell you what happens. Your CR6 fails over and over and over and you're left with this pile of filament that you have to throw away. Unfortunately, the CR6, after printing these, stopped working appropriately. It's the one from Kickstarter, one of the two that I purchased with my own money. And this one, the filament sensor continues to get tripped. I did try with non-Creality filament. For some reason it was working. This is with the Halo, Halo 3D, Halo filaments, something like that. But uh, it started to lift in the corner. It just, it wasn't good. So anyway, so a little bit bigger, we just couldn't do. And that's unfortunate. And so if we can't go, a little bit bigger, we have to go a lot bigger. Like a lot, lot bigger. Like, what if I told you it was this, but nearly three feet by three feet? <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> Look at this, this is the TIE Interceptor. Just to give you an idea, this is roughly three feet by three feet, or roughly 
36, I don't know, what is, uh, on the screen there should be some sort of indication of, of how, how large three feet by three feet is in real world units and not freedom units. But this, this is fantastic. Look at that, it's so large, it doesn't even fit. Here's the story, before we assemble it, the story is I wanted to print this and I this is Hi-Fi Blue from Protopasta. This is in a bunch of filament that they gave me because they couldn't sell it. Something had gone wrong with the machine when they were making it. They weren't, they couldn't be assured of the quality so they thought, well, if I give it to Joel, he can print with it. We're not worried about it. Makes sense, I like that. I got to printing this and this took six spools of Protopasta Hi-Fi Blue filament. Well, actually it took a little bit more because after I got through the first spool, I swapped in a new spool and as it was laying down the filament for that second spool, I leaned over and I hit the emergency stop button. I was so mad because it was late at night. Undeterred, I took, um, uh, I took a scraper and I scraped off all of the filament off the print bed. So it's covered in magic goo. It was holding onto it because it was still hot and I didn't care and I scraped it off and I scraped it off and then I started again and it went. Sliced and Simplify 3D with a PLA profile. This is a 1.2 millimeter extrusion width with 0.5 millimeter layer height. This is with 15% infill and I think it's, uh, is it honeycomb? Looks like it. I think it's honeycomb. The parts are fantastic. It took three days to do this all. This is amazing. Tie, tie interceptor and fix them, dude. Fix them, dude. Look at that. Fix them, yeah, dude. Yeah, you can actually read it. Listen, pause the video, go find Fix Some Dude on Reddit and, and just tell this person that they're rad and thanks for the awesome models. I'll wait. Thank you. I didn't give him too long, did I? <laughs> no. Okay. Uh, I have to clip the pieces. But because this was scaled proportionally X, Y, and Z or Z, the, the little pieces that connect it are, uh, are also scaled. But take a look. I want you to see, so the pieces that connect everything together, they kind of come to an angle and there's not a lot of space right there. So I should be able to just do that. Nice. I'll clean it up at the end, but then I should be able to. Perfect. That's the sound of success right there. We're gonna clip all these, get these pieces out, and then we're going to assemble a very large tie interceptor. Let's do it. So I think I know how this goes together. Let's see if it does. And we have hammers to help if it doesn't. Ooh, ooh, it's, it's slid right in. Look at that. Okay, okay. Worried about this part right here. Oh, not bad at all. I was really worried about this. I didn't think pieces would fit, but I guess when you scale up the model, you also scale up the clearance. I don't know if this is gonna hold. <laughs> Look at this! Look at this! <laughs> I can't even make the noise, I'm too excited. So I think we could use some 3D gloop to kind of put this together and keep it together. But right now, as far as sizes of things go, this is a really big tie interceptor. Modeled by Fixum Dude, scaled up slightly. Just a little bit. How's it look over there? It looks a lot cooler than I was expecting. Like I, I knew it was gonna be cool. I was worried that stuff wasn't gonna fit, but at the end of the day, I was like, I can't wait to put this together because it's going to be really cool. And uh, it is really cool. We'll have to 3D glue this together. So there we, look at that. Look at the size difference. So here's the normal one right here. Check that out. Normal one, you see it? Yeah. And then. <laughs> well now, just look at this. Look how small this looks. Look at that. That's, it's baby, it's tiny. Yeah, that stands no chance against that tie interceptor. At all. Okay, well, you know what? Um, leave a comment down below if you wanna see this printed a little bit bigger. Wait a minute, wait a minute. What if it's, what, <laughs> what if it's bigger 
Then the tie interceptor. Look oh at this. Lord. <laughs> I hit a pipe. Do, 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 do. So the white filament is 3D fill Kemp that was provided with the 3D platform 300 series workbench pro. Uh, the yellow filament is matter hackers, three millimeter build series PLA that I had laying around. And there it says millennium Falcon down there. And then right, right there. What's it say, Sean? Fix them, right. dude. Fix them, dude. Oh, well, we got a really big tie interceptor yelling again. You are. I'm excited. But can you please stop yelling me? You're starting to stress me out. I, uh, we got a really big tie interceptor. It's only appropriate if we get ourselves a really big Millennium Falcon. Space Benchy. So the Millennium Falcon empl uh, employs this bit, which has to bend in order to go into the slots. I've got myself a heat gun right here, right there. And just in case we need to get just that little bit of extra bend, can. I know that goes in there. And then let's see, this is the bottom. That's gonna go in right there. These go in right here. This is where it gets tricky because this has to bend. Okay, so then that one's got to go in. Ugh, that needs a little. That needs a little bit. Ow! 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 It's hot. Get it in there. Okay. Nice. Goes to. Oh no! I cut myself. Oh no! No one is surprised. How did I do that? It's not a make until you're bleeding. This is much harder than the small version. <laughs> Forgot one oh, of those. Oh, that'll do it. It looks like a cake. It does. Oh, is this the part of the internet where everything is cake? Yes. Okay, because it's not. So. That was too close. There, look. Ray, Han Solo, Chewbacca, no. Lando, they'd all be very proud of this. They would. Yeah. <sighs> that was harder than I thought it was gonna be. But thanks to science and physics, we now have ourselves, it's so big. We now have ourselves <laughs> a really, really big TIE Interceptor and a really, really big Millennium Falcon. Look at that. We live in a glorious time for 3D printing and having multiple places to store and share 3D models online is just awesome. One place does it like no other and that's things.com. When they take in a 3D model, there is the typical metadata associated with it. However, things also uses the model geometry as searchable criteria. This means you can use an uploaded 3D model to search for a 3D model. Plus, if you and some friends are collaborating on a 3D model, Thangs allows you to create a private place for you and your crew to carry out all the changes and design iterations. Then, once done, you can share it on Thangs for all others to download and print, if that's your jam. A cool way to search and a cool way to collaborate, and it's free to use. Head to Thangs.com and get started today. This was a lot of fun. Obviously, the link to this model will be down in the description of this episode. I'd love to see you print this out. I'd love to see what materials you print this in. I'd love to see if you do some sort of multi-material color mix combo and whatever creative way you have for fixing the satellite dish, that would be most appreciated as well. Gloop it. What? Gloop it. If you have 3D gloop, you can gloop it. I'll have to gloop this. This is a monstrosity in the most epic way possible. But listen, listen, fix them, dude, on Reddit. I hope you get notified that your models were printed extra large on the really big 3D printer. I'm really happy that we were able to do this. I love Star Wars. I love printing things big. 
This is just a marriage of wonderfulness right here. Well, shoot, if you made it this far, you're awesome. A big thanks to everybody that supports me in various ways. We'll get an After the Five going for Patreon and for YouTube memberships and over on the website. But beyond all that, don't forget to hug each other more and from a safe distance, high five. I'm gonna see if I can get that noise right. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> I can't do it. No, that was pretty decent. <coughs> nope, it's dead. <coughs> Almost. I, I used to be able to do it. Maybe when it's not 11. Maybe.